All right, so we're going to learn how to transform into objects. I have here a sign with a tab on it that says transform. And when I click on it, I transform into this cube that's right next to it. I can walk around and kind of imitate the cube, jump around. Everything still applies. And then if I walk up to the sign and click it again, I can walk out of it and I'm back to my usual self. Okay, so how does this work? So there are a couple of parts to this. So let's look at the sign first, since this is what's actually activating our ability to transform. If we click on the sign, you'll see that I have here a tab. And I went over how tabs work in a previous video. So if you're not sure how they work, just go check that out. If we look at it, this is standard tab here with a collision area. We have this text here that's transform. And then when I click on it, it's going to activate this node graph that's on it called transform to entry. And this node graph has a public variable called target GUID. And I can set the GUID of the target I want to transform into. So I just went on this uh, cube here. I copied its GUID. And then in here, I just pasted it in. Now on the cube itself, if you click on add common component, you'll see that it's, a, uh, it's right here, follow motion device. If you click on advanced editing, you'll see that there are a couple of options here. The first option is initially effective. Now we don't want this object, this cube, to follow anything right away. So we're going to keep this off and we're going to control this in the node graph. We can choose a target. So in this case, we want it to follow player one. But if you wanted it to follow something else, you can choose whatever's on the scene or you could choose a specific player. You can also set the target in the node graph if you, if you have like a specific entity or if you want to change between them uh, during runtime. Uh, but in my case, I just want it to follow me, which is player one. So I'll keep it at that. You can choose how you want it to follow. If you want it to follow the location and rotation of the target, then you can choose completely follow. Otherwise, if you just want it to follow the location or rotation, you can choose either of these. And then depending on what you chose, if your entity that or your target has attachment points, you can select uh, which attachment point it should follow. Now, in my case, since I chose player one, Every player comes with a preset, pre-made uh, attachment points, and you can choose whichever one you want. In this case, I'm choosing here the avatar root, which is where the feet of the player is. It's like the, it's like where the player touches the ground, the bottom. It's not a specific foot. It's kind of like in between. So it's centered at the ground of the player. And then you have a couple of options here for tracking type. You have here adsorption tracking, which perfectly syncs and, and matches the uh, object to follow the player like perfectly. There's no delay. It just it just snaps onto the target, right? You can also set it to delay tracking. Now, what this does is it takes in a transition time. So depending on how long you want it to take, that's how slow or fast the object will move. If I give it one second, no matter the distance between the player and the cube, it will take one second for it to arrive, right? So it could travel a thousand meters in one second, it, it doesn't matter. It'll just, it's based on time here, not meters per second, for example. And then we can choose constant speed tracking. Now this is meters per second. You can give it an initial velocity, which is the default rate, the default speed that the cube will travel at or the object will travel at. You can also give it an acceleration rate or acceleration duration. So for example, if I wanted the cube to uh, accelerate for five seconds at a rate of three meters per second per second, uh, then I would just choose it like this. And so for the first five seconds, it would accelerate and then it would stop and then travel at the uh, new velocity after it has accelerated. So it's going to keep the speed that it changes to over this acceleration duration and it's going to keep that, right? So it might turn from one to like 20 and then it'll just travel at 20 meters per second. For this setting, correct orientation to movement direction, this is basically just going to rotate or orient the object to its target. So I'm actually just going to preview this as an example real quick. You can see that if I click this, it's going to follow me and it's going to look at me. It's going to face towards me as it's trying to catch up to me. However, you should know that once this does come in contact with me, it's just going to snap onto me and use that uh, adsorption tracking again. So you can't really make it follow you and stay behind you or anything. Uh, there are some ways around it, but once it latches onto you, it's just going to latch onto you. Even if you give it like an offset, it's not going to move at a certain speed anymore, which is kind of an annoying limitation, but it is something for you to know. Currently, I can't think of a way to make it just follow you at a certain speed forever even after it reaches you. Uh, what you could do is you could kind of disable it for a second and then enable it, but then you're gonna have this 
really sudden stop and that might not look good it's gonna look a bit janky but that's really the only solution i can think of right now and finally we have destination target radius now what this is is it's basically a radius centered at the target and if it falls into this radius it will just basically stop tracking and it'll consider itself that it has reached the destination so if i give this like a radius of 10 then it's going to be a circle of 10 meters uh, the reason you don't see it now is because even though i have range preview turned on it's actually attached to the player and the player doesn't exist in the scene uh, so what i could do probably is choose let me see if i could get a sign here yeah right here here we go so it's gonna follow the sign and you can see that this radius right here is the destination target radius so if it falls within here it's going to consider itself as reaching the destination and then it's going to snap to the sign right away if i do this at like one or something then it has to reach literally within the sign basically uh, but if i do something like five or maybe that's too much like two you, if you want to give some leeway and kind of make it easier for the stone to reach the target you can kind of give it a little gap here but you could also give it a value of zero and then the stone has to match perfectly right in the center of the target in order for it to detect that it has reached its destination. So if you want to be super strict, you can set it to zero. As far as the coordinate system, you can set a world coordinate system, but uh, usually like 99% of the time you want a local coordinate, which is going to be uh, coordinate systems based on the sign or the target being the center. Or in this case, I'm just going to go back to player it's going to be based on the center of the player. So if, for example, I wanted to reach five units to the left of the player or whatever this is to the right, I'll put an offset of five and then it'll, instead of targeting me, it'll go five units to the right of me or whatever the target is, right? Similarly for uh, on the Y axis or on the Z axis, you can configure uh, the offset here. And now that we got all that boring stuff out of the way, Let's go ahead and finally take a look at this node graph that allows us to transform into an entity. All right, so let's take a look at this node graph here. It's very simple. It listens for when a tab is selected. And in this case, it's going to be the tab that's on the sign since this node graph is attached to the sign. Now, you should check the tab ID to make sure that the tab you're clicking is the right one. But in my case, there's only one tab on the sign, so it's kind of redundant. There's no point. So I'll just do it whenever the tab is selected. I'm going to activate or disable a follow motion device. Now what this does is if we go to the cube here, you'll see that the motion device initially effective is turned off because we don't want it to follow the player right away. We want to turn it off and then only turn it on when we click on the tab on the sign. And so in the node graph, we can control if the motion device is active or not. It takes in a parameter of the target entity. So this is the entity that has a motion device on it that we want to you know, enable or disable. So in this case, we're going to use a target GUID. Now this target GUID is a node graph variable. If you don't know what that is, I made a video on that. Please go check it out. But basically we have two node graph variables. We have a target GUID and an is active boolean. So the target GUID is the GUID of the object that has the motion device that we want to activate or disable. So in this case, it's going to be our stone. And you can see here on the node graph, if we edit the variable, you'll see it's right here, target GUID, and I put it in here. Now, the reason it shows up empty here is because we set it publicly. We don't have to set it in here. It's going to be set in the editor itself on the sign. So we can just leave it empty. But for is active, this is actually going to stay private. It's going to be initially set to no. And this is going to keep track if we already activated or disabled the motion device on our target GUID. So initially, this is going to be set to no because initially the motion device is going to be off on whatever the target is. And so we're going to pass in the target GUID into the query entity node. And it's going to give us an entity that we can pass in. And then for activate, we want to know if we should activate or deactivate it. And so this is where that is active node comes in handy because we're going to get its value. Initially, it's going to be no. So it's going to check this value here. If it's no, then we want it to be yes. We want to activate it. So we'll put yes in here. And then once we activate it, we're going to set our node graph variable and we're going to give it the variable value. Same thing. We're just going to get the inverse of whatever it currently is. So if it's a no, we're going to give it a yes. And so next time when we click on the tab, what's going to happen is we're going to try to activate or disable it. The node graph variable is going to be yes, it's going to be true. We're going to invert it to make it a no. And so then we're going to put the no in here, which is going to disable it. 
and then we're going to update our node graph again and give it a value of no. So it's just going to be this infinite cycle of setting it to yes and then setting it to no and then setting it to yes and then setting it to no. Basically just acts like a toggle. All right, so back in the editor here, I'm just going to make sure that on the cube, the tracking type is set to adsorption. And I'm just going to make sure that the follow attachment point is set to the avatar root, which is the bottom of the player. And so now if I click on this, you'll see that, oh no, <laughs> some things are happening here. So right now we're falling underneath the map and this is not the expected behavior, but you can see that the cube is actually following the player at the root node, but obviously we somehow fell through the world and also our player is still visible. And we need to make sure that the player is invisible so that it looks like we're just controlling the cube. So let's go ahead and fix this issue. So the issue here is that the cube actually has collisions on it, right? Uh, if I were to walk up to the cube and try to climb it or walk into it, I wouldn't be able to just walk through it, right? It's going to have collisions. So when the cube attaches to my position, it's actually going to interfere with the player's collision and there's going to be like this constant collision events firing over and over and eventually it's just going to cause the collisions of both the player and the cube to kind of freak out and in this case, it seems like the collision of the cube pushed the player through the floor. So we obviously need to disable the collision uh, the native collision here of the cube. So we're going to turn that off. And the other issue was that the player was visible. In order to sell the effect of us transforming, we need to get rid of the player model so that only the cube remains. So back in our node graph, let's go ahead and move this off to the right here. And let's add an activate model node here, right here, activate disable model display. So what we're going to do is actually disconnect this. We're going to make sure that after we activate or disable the motion device on the cube, then we're going to activate or disable the player model and then we're going to set the node graph. So the setting of the node graph goes last. If we don't set the node graph last, if we do it somewhere like in the middle, what's going to happen is we'll disable or activate the motion device and then we're going to set the variable and then we're going to try and activate the model. But when we try to activate the model, the node graph variable changes and so we're going to get the value that we don't expect, right? So we got to make sure that we set the node graph variable after everything is done. And so obviously the target entity here is the selector entity of the tab. We're going to pass this in. As far as the activate variable here, we're actually just going to set it to the is active node graph variable. Because remember, if it's a no, if it's not active, if the motion device is not active, then we're going to change it to a yes and activate it. But obviously we want to disable our model in that case. So we're still going to use this no value, this initial value, not the inverted value. So we're going to pass in this is active variable and it's going to be the inverse of whatever we pass into this node, right? So if this is active, then this is deactivated. If this is deactivated, then this is activated. And now if we go ahead and click this, so there we go. Our character has disappeared. We have turned into the cube. And if we go and click this again, you can see that we can exit the cube. The follow motion device has been turned off and uh, we can resume to normal. You can use this technique for a prop hunt game mode where you turn into objects and try to hide. And if you want the collision of the object to return to normal, what you can do is you can wait until the character exits its collision and then you can turn it back on. I'm not gonna do it in this video since it's just gonna make it too long. But if you were wondering how to do that so you can't just pass through this object forever, uh, that's probably how you could do it. You could probably just do it based off if the character leaves the object's collision.